Welcome Stuart Comstock Gay of the Delaware Community Foundation, President and CEO. And I hope you'll take this as a compliment, but uh, this is Delaware. And Fred Sears was a hard act to follow. Oh, Fred's a great guy. At the Community Foundation, but you have done it wonderfully. Uh, just uh, done a terrific job, and we're so fortunate to have you in Delaware. Well, that's very kind of you to say, you know, in some ways it's easy because you have so many generous people here and so many people whose shoulders you get to stand on, and everybody wants to work together, so it, it makes it uh, a real rewarding kind of work to do. Well, I think before we start, you know, maybe there's somebody who's going to catch this interview who really doesn't know what the foundation does. Can you talk a little bit quickly about the investment and management and so forth? Yeah, so if you think about the community foundation, we're a particular kind of community, a particular kind of foundation. I kind of think of us as a, a Swiss army knife of foundations. We're made up of over a thousand different funds, all doing in a different way, something to support Delaware, whether it's a scholarship fund at a particular high school, whether it's a nonprofit agency fund, whether it's a family's donor advised fund or a company's charitable giving program or a fund that's set up for perpetuity or not. We work with everybody, but it's all about higher quality of life for everybody in Delaware. We manage the monies, we do the investment oversight, and we help the donors give the money to the things that they care about. Uh, what that means is each year we're doing 15 to 20 million dollars in grants and scholarships across the state and for all kinds of purposes. It's so simple. It's brilliant, Stuart, you know, mm -hmm. the way it, it's set up and uh, operates. Now, here we are in a pandemic and uh, you have written that these moments like the one we're in now that really test our national resolve also bring us together. What do you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's so easy for us to look at the things that separate us. And one thing that disasters do, or a pandemic does, is it means we're all in the same boat in this thing. Everybody's dealing with it. If you have a flood, everybody says, hey, I'm in the flood, you're in the flood, how can we accomplish something together? And there's a little bit of that in the pandemic too. Set aside the political differences about it, but we're all in this and there are all kinds of things that are bad about it, but we can all look at each other and say, let's hold hands. How can we collectively make a difference and address this problem? I'm smiling because I remember Chris Christie standing next to President Obama after Hurricane Sandy and they were new besties, you know? Right. So show me a Martian invasion and I'll show you a united planet. Right, exactly right. And, and that is what we've got. It's like everybody's affected by it. And even if what you're concerned about is the restaurants that are closed, or if what you're concerned about is the people in the hospitals and the retirement homes, we've all got this shared enemy, as it were, which is the pandemic. Sure. Well, let's hope we do anyway. Um, can you talk about some of your collaborations? You have just been doing amazing work during the pandemic, but you've also been collaborating with other philanthropic groups. Yeah, you know, very early on, that first week when everybody was closed, the week of March 15th, we got together with Delaware Alliance for Nonprofits, with the United Way of Delaware, and with Philanthropy Delaware, and said, look, the four organizations, we need to do something together because this is going to be big and it's going to involve all of us. And we created a COVID-19 response initiative, including all of us. Lots of different parts, but at core, there were two funds we created. One was a fund held at United Way to do some quick response. Another was a fund we held to do slightly longer term strategic grants. Both of those have moved forward. And, you know, between us, we've raised about seven and a half million dollars for these two Incredible. funds. Incredible. Put out between five and six million in that money so far. The only reason it's not all out is because we're also collectively helping get CARES Act money to nonprofits. And so the state asked us to help arrange for another 25 million to go to nonprofits, but it's a collective effort. We all have our strengths. We all bring different aspects, but by working together, we're able to do this. And if I can say, our fund at the DCF, we've got dozens and dozens of volunteers doing reviews and oversight of this thing. We've got hundreds of donors, foundations, businesses, individuals who contributed to it. We've awarded grants to over 150 nonprofits. It has been uh, just an incredibly rewarding piece of work. And of course, there's still so much more to do. 
Yeah, and uh, a certain segment of the United States Senate could take a page out of your mm. book. Uh, you know, it's all about- It's so sad. It really is just awful. It's so sad. I'm involved with a, a national group of foundation people. We get together, about 15 of us, and, and it's intended to be a group of people from very different political perspectives. A couple community foundations, but the rest are people with more pronounced right or left views. When we come together to say, we have so much in common. What is it we can do together to set aside these, you know, to focus on the 80% of things we agree on, not the 20% we disagree on? Right. I think I mentioned when I reached out to you that um, it kind of reminded me of memories of 1968 after multiple assassinations and the war in Vietnam. And, but still, people were not as divided as they are now. They weren't fully you know, sort of hunkered down in their silos, as everyone says. And uh, we've just got to get past that. It, it, it's such a discouraging time in that way. I grew up in the Midwest where, you know, it really was, you just went, worked with people to accomplish things. And a lot of us grew up in worlds like that. And, you know, it's social media, it's the hyper partisanship of yeah. our sources of news. We, we go into our bubbles and we refuse to look at anything else. And we just have to learn to look outside of our own world and hear from people we don't agree with and, and try to understand, try to genuinely learn to listen because there's, everybody's got a piece of the truth and nobody's got all of it. And sure. we need to learn how to do this stuff together. And, you know, I've always felt, and I'm sure I got it from my Irish grandmother, that um, when you're feeling down, when you're feeling the worst, the best remedy is to reach out and do something for right. someone else, to give of yourself. Yeah. And that's what the foundation is doing all day long in healthcare, housing support, food. Can you highlight anything right now? Yeah, well, certainly the, the healthcare work right now is becoming bigger and bigger for us. We're involved with a project, a partnership with the University of Delaware and the State Department of Public Health around social determinants of health. How can we support local organizations that are helping neighborhoods be healthier in all kinds of ways? The Highmark Blueprints program is another one in that space, and we, we help them give their money out. They just gave out $2 million about 10 days ago to nonprofits who are doing work to strengthen healthy communities. Health, you know, one of the things we're seeing in the pandemic is how problematic the disparate health care is. You know, some people don't have the same access. It just is harder. So health care is big. Looking at racial equity, the work with youth around scholarships is one piece that we're also in. It's all about building a sense that we're all in this together and supporting the people who need it. You know, and let's make the point uh, that these aren't all millionaires that have funds at the Delaware Community Foundation. Very few these of them are. <laughs> are. Very few. These are families uh, that, I don't know, maybe they have a few thousand dollars and they want to equitably give it away to people that really need it. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about how you, you know, who has a fund and quickly how you manage those. Yeah, so somebody will say, you know, oftentimes somebody gets a bequest or somebody sells their business or somebody downsizes and one time in their life they got a chunk of money. And they say, you know what, I want to give this out over the next decade or longer. Let's put it in a fund. And then we manage the money so you don't have to think about it. And then we'll help you as much as you want, figure out who to give it to. Or you can just tell us, I know who I want. To, I want to support the YMCA and I want to support Reach Riverside and I want to support my school. And we'll cut those checks for you and make sure that you get what you need out of it. Or we can help you as much as you want, figure it out. I have a donor just today said, I haven't been as involved in Wilmington lately. Can you tell me who's doing this kind of work because I want to grant some money to them. So we help people figure out who they want to give it out to. Fabulous. And, and manage the back office. All you have to do is do the joy of giving. Of course, the way the market's been rocking for the last few years, it really has enabled you to do more. It has enabled us to do more, you know, it goes up and down. <laughs> Sometimes it goes down and there's a little bit less. But you know, the idea is we're an institution that's going to be here forever. And in 50 years, somebody else is going to be sitting in my seat and taking some of the money that was raised now and some of the funds that families set up now and helping to give them out for the needs of Delawareans in 2050 and 2070 and on and on and on. 
Well, we're blessed in Delaware. We really are. Before I let you go, tell me, what are your hopes and dreams for the new year? What are you looking for? Well, looking for, uh, I'm looking for a healthier 2021. I'm looking for us to take this opportunity to really think about and implement a new normal. What is the new normal that's a little more equitable, where schools are helping people who haven't been helped as much, where health care is available to everybody, where the economy is robust once again, and jobs are plentiful, and people are thriving and living and playing. Uh, take advantage of these down times and say, okay, what was it that wasn't working before? And let's make it better as we come back. Well, to me, that sounds like the United States of America functioning mm -hmm. like it should be functioning. So, Well, we can create our own version of it right here. <laughs> Stuart Comstock Gay, thank you so much. I wish you a happy, healthy new year, and I hope that I can call on you again. Absolutely great to talk with you, Sharon. Thank you. Right. Ciao.